Friends, we are continuing in our series of sermons from the first letter of John. Joe Clifford planned to preach today, but due to weather and airlines, he is still in Dallas, Texas. He is very sorry to miss being with the new members and very sorry to miss being with the seniors as we celebrate you in worship today. So Joe sent me his sermon manuscript late last night. I adapted it a bit. I removed all references to my wife. (laughs) And I tried to make it a bit more my own, but frankly, all of this that is good is his work, and anything that doesn't make sense is something I did in wee hours of the morning. Let's listen together for what God might say to us from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12 and verse 16. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. This is the word of the Lord. What is love? What is love? Joe posed that question this past week to the Tuesday morning men's Bible study, and there was no immediate response It's a big question, simple words, but profound and hard to reply. When that question was asked of a group of Gen Xers, what is love? The immediate response was some singing accompanied by head bobbing, inspired by Will Ferrell and Chris Catan's characters in the movie Night at the Roxbury. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. It's a hit song from the early 90s, named one of the top five Euro hits of all time. The lyrics have lots of questions. What is love? In that song, love means baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more, sung no less than 20 times. With some of the verses wondering why I'm not the one, baby, you're the one. I'm not sure we can answer what is love from the wisdom of that song. So go back in music history to 1967 when the Beatles sang love, love, love over and over again. And then they told us love is all you need and they sang that over and over again. But still no help in telling us what it is. In 1984, the iconic Tina Turner posed the question, what's love got to do with it? She sounded a little down on the whole thing, you know, nothing more than a second-hand emotion, a sweet, old-fashioned notion. Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? I'm not sure if Tina was expressing pain because of the great suffering she'd faced in life or whether she's being playful to suggest that love, despite all those challenges, indeed is worth it. And then in 1995, Johnny Lee sang, Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in too many faces. Until you came knocking on my heart's door, you're everything I've been looking for. He still doesn't tell us what love is even once he found it or was found by it. 
Now, I promise I'm not going to work my way through the rest of music history as a sermon. But given that music always sings about love in every generation, it appears that this question, what is love, has been considered for quite some time. What is love? How do you know it? How do you do it? We tend to reduce love to a feeling, to an attraction, to some kind of chemistry, which too often indeed becomes that secondhand emotion that Tina sang about. If love is simply a feeling or an attraction or a desire or some emotion, then it comes and it goes through all of life. Indeed, it could be described as some sweet old-fashioned notion. Surely, love is more than that. What is love? What if we pose that question to the writer of 1 John? How would he respond? He would likely correct us, tell us we're asking the wrong question. For John, love is not a question of what, but love is a question of who. Who is love? That's the right question for First John. He offers a very direct answer to it. God is love. When I consider defining love, I think of people who've loved me most of my life, my parents, my siblings, my husband, the church family that I grew up in, youth leaders, family friends, the community around me who encouraged me and challenged me with love. It's so much easier to think about the who of love than the what, but in considering the who, then the what comes into focus, for I can think of the ways I've been loved by them, the ways they have loved me, and the ways I strive to respond in love. For John, all love depends on that great first love. That's God's love for us, for the whole world and all of creation. God is love. From the Christian perspective, God defines love. God's love is the foundation of all love. John refers to his readers as beloved. The word comes from the word agape, and it means loved ones. It's an important distinction. By calling them beloved, John is emphasizing, you are loved. You were already loved. You haven't done anything to merit that love. You are God's beloved. By referring to them as beloved, he is grounding this in God's love for them first. By referring to them as beloved, he calls them then to love one another, to be born of God's love. Verse 11 summarizes it. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Who is love? God is love. And God loves us without condition. As God's beloved, we are called to love one another. So how does God love us? Scripture tells us that God has loved us from the beginning, in Genesis, in creation. God brings us into being, creating us in God's own image, filling us with the breath of life, and this is love. God provides everything we need, a bountiful creation to sustain our existence, and this is love. God sets a boundary for us, saying, all this is yours, but not this, because this will harm you. And this, too, is love. When we transgress that boundary, when we play God by judging who is good and evil, God forgives. God gives grace to enable us to endure the consequence of sin. This is love. As we wander from God's way, God sends prophets to call us back, prophets like Isaiah to remind us, to teach us the way of life, 
calling us to loose the bonds of injustice, to share our bread with the hungry, to offer housing to those with no home, to not hide ourselves from one another, and this is love. John gets to the heart of the matter for us. God's love was revealed among us in this way, he writes. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. That's 1 John's version of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. God enters into the reality of our existence in Christ, into our lives, our hopes, our fears, our joys, our sadness, our triumphs, and our sufferings. God is born as a human baby and grows into adulthood surrounded by family and by faith. This is love. In Christ, God teaches us the way that is the truth about life, the way of love and grace and justice and mercy and faith. In Christ, God teaches us the way that heals the sick and gives sight to the blind, the way that blesses the least of these and challenges those with the most to live faithfully. This is is love. In Christ, God welcomes the stranger, reconciles the estranged, lifts up the lowly, restores the outcast, and welcomes the prodigal home. This is love. In Christ, God knows the depths of human suffering, knows the pain of denial and betrayal, endures the physical beating at the hands of the powers of the world, in Christ, God experiences the reality of death, giving his life for the love of the world. This is love. What is love? According to John, it's not the right question. The right question is who is love? God is love. God defines what love is. Love is about creating and providing and sustaining and boundary setting and enduring and forgiving and equipping and teaching and healing and reconciling. Love is about redeeming and suffering and dying and rising again. This is love. Today we celebrate our high school seniors as they approach graduation. What a wonderful day. You did not make it to this day on your own. You stand here today as a testament of love. You've been loved to this moment. You've been loved here. Roughly 18 years ago, your parents brought you into this world, joining with God in creating you, bringing you into being. We human beings are the most helpless infants for the longest of any mammal. Horses walk within 90 minutes of birth. It takes us almost a year. Somebody has to take care of us. People have loved you. Your parents your family, your teachers, your neighbors. They set boundaries for you. They taught you. They guided you. They forgave you. They nurtured you. They drove you in carpool. They waited up at night for you. They pay your cell phone bill. And this is love. This is love. Your faith family has loved you, living out the promises they made in baptism to guide and nurture you in faith. This is love. As you graduate and embark on your next chapter, you are beloved. You go forward into the world loved. Loved without question, loved without condition, loved without boundary, you are loved. We all know this love from God, this love that is God. It's who God is, and it's what God does. We all know this love in Jesus Christ who loves us completely, even unto death. 
There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God we know in Jesus Christ our Lord. In life and in death, we belong to God. Whether we like it or not, we are God's beloved. Living in response to this love, we discover our own life's deepest meaning and our highest purpose. To know this love is to be given a mission in life to love one another, to love one another as God has loved us. It's a high calling. It's a desperate need in a world that is void of love. We love others by creating and providing and guiding and teaching and forgiving and enduring and suffering alongside those who suffer. This is love. This is the way of God. This is the way of Jesus Christ. Indeed, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Beloved, thanks be to God for the best news we hear. We are God's beloved, and God is love. Thanks be to God. Amen.